everybody, this is Mike with the One Stop Co-op Shop, and today I'm showing you a game that is currently on Kickstarter as of today, Frostpunk. I first heard about this one from Mark Dainty at Not Bored Gaming. Uh, he did a playthrough earlier, and I got the chance to try it out as well. I played it with the designer, and now I'm showing you a solo playthrough today. And unfortunately, I couldn't get a physical prototype of this one in time, but I am gonna show you how it plays online. And this uh, same TTS mod, which works really well, should be available pretty soon in the Kickstarter. I think they're trying to get it in the first couple of days, so you should be able to try it out as well. Now, the basic theme of this one, this is based on a video game. And you are in a post-apocalyptic society where basically everything is freezing. I uh, think if you've ever seen or read the book The Road, you'll know the uh, kind of idea here. So it's not zombies that are going to come kill us. It is the cold. And you are a small group of survivors, your own little city-state. And you have this big generator that can keep off the heat for a while. And uh, you can play different scenarios in the game, but in this one, it's a pretty basic goal, and I'm 99% sure I'm going to die in it, but you're trying to survive until the end of the scenario. So I'm going to go ahead and set up the game. Some things are already put out for me, but I'm going to show you the things that I am doing. And then instead of doing a separate how to play section, I'm going to talk you through each phase of the round, and they have a nice player aid for that and kind of show you what you're doing. So first to prepare the board, you'll see that we have a few buildings out here. Here we have a place where we can spend some food to make our population happier. Uh, here we have a basic generator building. Each of these is buildings, by the way, where I can uh, take an action with my workers to repair the generator. And over here is the platform where I can enact new laws for my society, becoming totalitarian or kind and generous. We'll see how it goes. I've also got some starting resources I can harvest, a uh, bunch of wood over here, a bunch of coal over here. Those are the two main resources. And uh, these blank spaces are places where I can build new buildings. And you'll see, based on icons on the board, I've also seeded the board with a bunch of trees that if I can reach them, I can cut down for more wood. Now to finish randomizing the setup, I'm going to reach into the starting wall resource bag, or reach into it, not grab it, and I'm going to put it on each of the corners of the board. Now if I get a little snow one like here, there's no special resources at that corner. Here there's a permanent source of wood if I can reach it and build a logging operation over there. Same thing over here for coal, and I'm going to draw until I get uh, three, whoops, go back. <laughs> I'm going to draw until I get three of these things. So there's another snow one, nothing happened in there. And there's another wood one. Okay, so that's uh, one of the little randomizers. I can put the snow ones back in the bag. And I'm never going to draw anything else from there, so just these three places will have the uh, little resources waiting for me over there. Now for the three corners where I didn't place a resource, I'm going to go to these range tiles over here. We have A's and B's, and I'll go ahead and shuffle those a little bit. And what I'm going to do is for each of these ones that didn't get a resource, I'm going to put an A and a B in a little straight line uh, reaching out to it. There we go. And once I have them all set, I'm going to go ahead and flip them up. And you'll see that each of these has two potential spaces for buildings, and most of them are also going to have some resources. So you'll see we have trees here, we have some coal here, some wood here, some more coal here. And two of them also have these power cores we can harvest to upgrade our buildings or uh, build these automaton workers that can help us. And there we go, I've got everything laid out, all the resources that I might be able to harvest at the start of the game, including our steam cores over here. Another thing I'm gonna do super important is pick a random society card, which will drastically change what my starting resources are in the game. And they have four of them at the moment, so let's see. So there's a bunch of things here that you'll understand better as we get into the game, but this is my starting population and how many of them are sick. And bringing the card over here, you'll see that I have 25 population of workers and their sickness starts at two, that's the number after the slash. 12 population of engineers, eight population of children with two of them sick, zero automatons, uh, you rarely start with them. And then I'm starting with four food, or sorry, that's hunger. <laughs> Let me get to the food, there we go, four food. So in terms of supply, I have two coal, that's again that little uh, hexagonal uh, token symbol there, and three wood. And I have one corpse taken from this corpse bag over here. So uh, that starts my little corpse track here. That's uh, this symbol here. And finally, something you'll hear me talk about a lot are the hope and discontent tracks. And you'll see uh, the two slash one means we're starting with two on each. And we're going to flip the first one over to its active side. So here are those. Uh, they have three different types of uh, symbols they can have. Those are motivation tokens. 
And that's greed and anger. So I have an active anger and an active motivation. Those don't inherently do anything on their own, but other effects will check for them. All right, so my society is all set up. We can get rid of that. Another thing I'm going to set up are my technology cards. There are eight in the game currently, and I'm going to randomly take four of them. And the other four I can remove from the game. And of these four, I'm going to flip over the first two. So I've got uh, lighter scout sleds and shelter redesign. And those are technologies I'll be able to discover later in the game. And I'll have the uh, chance to potentially see the other two. So we'll get to those later. Another thing we're going to randomize to vary our play experience are the laws we can potentially enact in the game. And the eight you're seeing right here are always in play. And they're actually opposing pairs. So like uh, child labor and child shelter. If I ch enact one of them, then I can't enact the other. Food additives or heated meals, though they oppose each other. New faith and new order. So those are always in. But additionally, you have all these other laws. And right now there are eight of them, although they might add more. And they're just going to have me randomize. I could uh, draw them if I had the real cards, but I'm just going to roll... So I'm going to use four, six, seven, and eight. So protect the indispensable, fighting arena, public house, and starvation rations. So I'll bring all four of those over above the other ones. And you can't see them right now, but each of these has two dusk cards underneath. These are like event cards that will resolve later in the game. And basically, whichever one I choose, I'll randomly get one of those cards. So even if I play with the exact same laws in a game, I still might have different events show up because of them. Speaking of events, I have to set up my starting dusk deck. So I'm always going to use this inevitable card, although there can be different versions of it. And then I'm also going to shuffle my social dispute cards. And I'm going to add one and shuffle it into my deck. So I'll just have a deck of two to start. But I can see what it says. So it says, citizens' attitudes shape the future of our city. And if hope tokens are greater than discontent tokens, remember we added two of each, so they're not yet, I can exhaust one of my hope tokens to gain some benefits. If discontent is greater than hope, I suffer some effects. And finally, if hope equals discontent, I activate all my tokens. So I might want to try to somehow get rid of a discontent or add a hope here if I can, although we'll see if that's even possible. And I don't know if this card will turn, uh, come out at the end of the turn, although it could because there's only one of the two in there right now. I also need to shuffle my morning event cards. That's another deck. And a few of the things that are already set up. I've got my round marker on round one and I just survive until round 12. Good luck. I've got this little event reminder token on round four, which means that I will resolve an event there and I can show you that in a second. And then this storm token on round nine is representing this incoming storm that's gonna make things even more frozen and terrible. And that's gonna move down. And basically when it reaches my round token, I'll have a storm. And then another even bigger storm will come down the track trying to catch me again. And I mentioned an event on round four. You'll see that here uh, in this one scenario, there'll be more than this in the game. Are we alone? Numerous citizens think that we should explore the area around the city and look for other survivors from our convoy. So that's why I have an event trigger on token uh, four on the fourth space. And it says at the start of the fourth round, I'm going to check if I have a beacon built or not, basically a way to go explore for other people. And if I do, I'll have a uh, one card happen over here. And if I don't, something else will happen. So basically, I have a sort of branching little path in the scenario based on whether I accomplish this first kind of mini objective or not. All right, a few other important things to show you. This is the generator board where I'll be uh, kind of measuring how much heat I generate with coal. Down at the bottom, you have these three different level of heat tokens that will mark how well I'm uh, heating and uh, keeping my people happy, and also uh, how much uh, coal might malfunction in the generator because of it, and effects from how much I get cold. Additionally, I've got the section for the generator itself. Uh, this token is going to measure my heat value as I spend coal, and this little tracker here will rotate as storms hit and stuff happens to make it more expensive to start up the generator each round. And then uh, tokens will malfunction and go on here and the generator could explode, making me lose the game. Lots of fun things. Finally, a very important thing, all the buildings I can build are over here with their cost in wood. And you saw this board before when I set up my society, but there is something very important I haven't done yet, which is getting my workers. So if I zoom in, they're kind of faint, but you'll see these little yellow divider lines here. And I look at for each type of worker I have, there are workers, engineers, and children, what area they're in within these borders. And it'll tell me how many of those guys I get in my pool. So I have five basic yellow orange workers, three more trained engineers, and two children right now. And here's where they all go. I've got my workers, my children who can't work unless I enact a law and be a horrible person, and my engineers. And this is an action placement game in a sense. So you'll see how they all work. 
So that's it for setup. It might seem like a lot of stuff going on, but let's walk through one step of the turn at a time and hopefully it'll make a lot of sense. So here's the phases of the turn. And on your first turn, you're gonna skip everything and go straight to the action phase, jumping right into using your workers. But just kind of run through them in a general sense. In the dawn phase, we're gonna do any events. Remember, we only have one on the fourth round. In the morning phase, we'll do a morning event card with some effects. In the generator phase, we'll see how many people get sick from how much we heated if we didn't heat the uh, civilization enough that round. And we'll take some malfunction cubes and maybe make the generator blow up. In the weather phase, the storm will advance and we'll uh, maybe get some food. Preparation phase, we get all our people ready. We take actions. We do a dusk phase, another event. So there's basically a morning and a dusk event each day. And then a hunger phase, we see if we can feed everybody. And then finally a night phase where uh, we bring everybody back and see if they have somewhere to sleep and stay warm because this game is all about staying warm and not getting people sick. But before we get into the phases of the turn, some quick uh, loss conditions. I already told you the victory was to get to round 12, at least in this scenario. Uh, loss conditions, if I have enough corpses to fill this whole track <laughs> because I'm just letting my whole people die, then I lose. If my discontent ever grows to the fifth spot, I lose. And similarly, if my hope track ever loses the last token to that little skull and crossbones, I lose. And finally, if the malfunction track fully fills twice, the first time the generator will just uh, shut down a malfunction, the second time it will blow up and kill us all. So uh, if that happens, I lose. But lots of ways to die, only one way to win, survive. So the first phase we're gonna worry about here, although it is the sixth phase in the actual turn order, is the action phase. And currently I'm looking at eight actions available. I've got three engineers and five workers. Again, children cannot work until something changes in the laws. And you've got some basic things you can always do. You can always put any worker down on a space with resources like this to collect two of them for your civilization, putting them in your supply. And each space like this can only have one worker on it at a time. Same thing with each building. So once I gathered coal here, I couldn't gather it with other workers in the same round or day. And I could send my worker way further out, like all the way over here to get this wood or that coal. But as you'll see in a second, that'll make it more likely to look at cold and suffer. Another sort of basic action you can take is to put a worker on a building to activate that building's ability. And I did figure out how to zoom in on them a little bit. So here's a cookhouse. I was saying uh, you can spend four food to uh, either get rid of a discontent or add a hope, which I might actually want to try to do because of that dusk card we saw. The generator repairs the generator if it's got too much malfunction. And like I said, the platform enacts one of those uh, 12 laws we saw. Now notice on the platform in the generator, they have this little icon in the bottom left corner. That means that you need an engineer to take that action. The basic workers won't cut it. But for everything else like gathering resources, they don't care if you're an engineer or a worker. And finally for now, because I don't have that many buildings, we have a couple of always available actions. If you send a worker here, you can perform up to three build or dismantle actions. A build action means picking a building. Let's say I picked uh, a workshop that costs one wood. Down here is the cost. And you take that building and you put it in any empty spot. Or if you want to be wasteful, you can put it in a spot with resources, but all the resources go away. So like I would lose all five of that coal. So again, putting a person here can do three of those build actions, or you can also sprinkle in some dismantle actions, which means taking away a building and just getting one wood for your trouble if it's uh, served its purpose or you need that space for something else. And the other action you can take is to shovel snow, basically add more tiles to the map. But this is always a cold action, and this is always a heated action. I'm gonna talk about that in a second. And whenever you take that shovel snow action, you can either put down two A tiles, uh, you put them down face down first, and then you flip them and place resources on them like at the beginning of the game, or one B tile, which tends to be more lucrative, but it's also harder to heat because it's further from your nice little generator. Now I've mentioned heating a lot, and here's why it matters. If an action counts as heated, and we'll get to how that works in a second, then nothing bad happens when you place a worker there. But if it doesn't count as heated, then whenever you take that action, you're going to take the type of worker who's doing it. So let's say it was a, a yellow worker here and you're gonna increase their sickness marker one. Basically people are getting cold from doing the action, getting sicker, more likely to eventually die. It's bad for business. So the basic idea is on your turn before any action, you can spend coal and you need to spend one coal to get this little heating token on to the first base down here. Now later on, this can rotate and make that cost higher. So like it might cost two or three or four coal to get it onto that first base. But once it's over here and the generator is actually lit for the day, you can spend one coal each to increase it up this track. And the track has a few meanings. First, you'll see the like hex sides here. 
if you have the heat token at least reaching this token, then the entire center tile counts as heated which means any action we do around the generator that could be uh, gathering these resources, that could be going into these buildings, that'll count as heated, no negative effect, no sickness. Once you reach this one, all those A tiles are heated, and once you reach this one, the B tiles are heated, and you're basically good to go. Additionally though, buildings themselves will have different levels of insulation. So red is the best, this is a very easy to heat building. Orange is in the middle, and yellow is kind of the weakest. And you'll see those colors represented here. Once you move the heating token off of something, so you need to have moved it off and be able to see the color. Now red buildings are heated no matter where they are. So if I built a red building like all the way on the outer ring up here, I would still be fine. Once it moves off this, all orange buildings are heated no matter how far away they are. And once it moves off this, all yellow buildings are heated. And it doesn't matter as much right now, but these tokens will eventually climb up the track and be further and further apart. So uh, it might really be important to get a certain color heated even if you can't get all the tiles heated. So let's get into my actions and try to figure out what I'm gonna do with my eight workers. Uh, the big things are I wanna get some buildings built, including some tents that will let me actually house my people and keep them warm at the end of the night. Otherwise they'll all get super sick. I might wanna do some laws, probably wanna deal with my children pretty quickly. I clearly wanna gather as many resources as I can because wood is gonna help me build more buildings and coal will let me keep on firing the generator and keeping us warm and safe. And because of that dust card I know is coming, I might wanna deal with discontent or hope. Might want to start working towards building a beacon before round four. And I'm going to need some food pretty soon. I got to deal with my sick people. <laughs> There's more that I can do all at once. It's one of these survival games. So let's just make some choices. So first of all, before I do anything, I'm going to spend my two coal. Because if I don't do that, then pretty much everything I do will be a cold action. I'll gain even more sickness. So the first one will get it off of here because the startup cost is one and get it there. The second one will get it there. So now any action in the first two hexes, so everything except the B tiles is going to be heated, as well as orange buildings and red. Basically anything I might want to do for now is pretty good. Now I still might want to spend one more coal before the round is over because uh, basically you look at where the furthest token is and every one of these icons that's on the left is going to negatively impact you if your heat has not reached them. So if I heat one more coal, I won't have to suffer that effect, which I'll tell you later is a pretty bad effect. It makes my people um, closer to dying from sickness. Uh, but for now, here is fine. All right, first thing I want to do, I think, is get some more wood so that my uh, building actions will be useful. So I'll grab one of my regular orange workers, put him here. He's now the only one that can go there. And remember, I always get two resources. It gives me five wood, which is probably enough. Whoop, you're not there yet. <laughs> That's probably enough to get all the buildings I might want to build with a single uh, three action there. Yeah, and speaking of, let's go ahead and build. So to kind of run through the main uh, buildings, at least these one and two cost ones that are more feasible, the workshop lets me upgrade other buildings or gain those technology cards I set up at the beginning. The medic post lets an engineer decrease my uh, sickness level. Very useful. Hunter's Hut lets me get more food and gives me consistent food generation every turn, so pretty huge one there. Gathering Post I can put in between a bunch of resources and then consistently gather all those resources, so that one's pretty nice. And over in the twos, Factory is kind of like a better workshop, upgrading bigger buildings. Sawmill lets me cut down trees for three wood. Charcoal Kiln lets me convert one wood to four coal. And tent is the worst housing, but it will hold two people at a cheap cost. Now bunk houses over here are better because they're better heated and they withstand the storms better. And the absolute best are houses. They'll last basically the entire game, but clearly with them, uh, they're not even available yet until I uh, get some technology actions to remove this token and then they still cost four wood each. So for now, my must builds are a hunter's hut. I think I want to get a gathering post to gather more efficiently. And then I think I should probably build my first tent. So that's two one wood cost, one two wood cost. It's going to be four of my wood total. And remember, each of these has to go on either a blank space or they have to take away all the resources from somewhere. And I can't put them where a worker already is. And these are all yellow, the worst heated. So I really love them having them next to my generator. I will do that with the hunter's hut, and I will do that with the tents. But the gathering post, I think I'm going to put out here. And then my plan is to shovel some snow so that I can hopefully uh, get even more resources. So to that end, let's have another regular worker shovel some snow. Remember, that's always a cold action. It's tough to shovel snow. So I'm going to increase my number of sick workers by one. And by the way, when I say number, it's not the number of actual meeples. Because remember, like uh, here, eight children were only represented by two meeples. Twelve engineers were only represented by three. So uh, when I'm talking about like sick workers, it kind of corresponds to these larger numbers, not the number of meeples. 
So remember, I can place two A tiles or one B tile. In my case, I want to put them next to this gathering post I built and hopefully get a ton of resources. Oof, that was not great because <laughs> I got uh, trees and coal. Now the coal is nice, the trees not so much. But hey, I'm still going to commit to my uh, action. So I'll get the steam core, I'll get the wood. Remember, I get one from each space adjacent to me. I'll get coal, I'll get another wood from my own spot. But I cannot get a tree because I need to specifically have the uh, little lumber place here to actually cut them down. Still a uh, decent little haul there. And before I forget, let's go ahead and spend the last coal to avoid that negative uh, thing I showed you. By increasing heat to really the maximum level I would ever want it to be at, uh, currently at least. Alright, I've got four workers left, regular one and three engineers. I do want to do my first law with the engineers. And since uh, Mark in his playthrough was a horrible human being and decided to put his children to work, I'm going to show you what child shelter looks like. So a few things on laws. First at the top, you'll see a plus or minus blue or red. So that means in this case, this is very good for that uh, dusk event we know might be coming. I'm going to gain one hope token. That's what that means. And it says children will be safer if they stay in child shelters during the day and they won't cause any mischief. So basically, I'm going to unlock a special building with this called the Child Shelter that costs one wood, and I can build one immediately. And then, like I mentioned, there are two different Dusk cards. I'm going to randomly take one without looking at it, and I'm going to shuffle it right into our pile, so now that could be what we draw. And the other Dusk card and Child Labor are gone. They are not choosable for the rest of this game. And Child Shelter kind of goes over here. And let's not forget to gain our hope token. So we have a choice whenever we gain a hope token, and it's similar with discontent. We can either, when we gain one, flip one of these to its active side, which might affect things, or just gain a new one. And oh my gosh, I keep on just getting motivation. I'd rather have uh, some mixes. But the nice thing is I now outnumber hope uh, over discontent if that one dusk card comes out. So my people are pretty happy that I'm being nice to the children. I also get to add this lovely child shelter to my possible buildings. It only costs one wood, remember, and they said I can build it immediately without spending an action. And let's see, it's an orange, so it should be okay out here. And this is going to hold up to four children. So I've now gotten heating for my children for quite a while, although my one tent is still not necessarily going to cut it. And speaking of things not cutting it, I don't really have enough food right now. So let's go ahead and send a worker to a hunter's hut for plus five food. I advance the food token, so from four to nine. And how much food I'm going to need is based on which type of worker is being fed for this round. And that's shown up here on the day tracks. So you'll see round one, I got to feed children, round two, engineers, round three, workers, and then it repeats like that. Children and engineers isn't too bad, but workers is a nightmare. Look how many I have. So uh, the chances of that happening are pretty slim, I think, but I should be okay for the kids. I'm already one past them on the food I need. All right, so all I've got left is two engineers. I don't need to spend food to get uh, hope anymore because I already got that taken care of for me. And I don't really want to gather any of these uh, other resources from my gathering post. That'll already be okay for what I need. But I do have no coal for the moment. So maybe I'll gather some of the coal over here. Yeah, that seems to make sense to me. So that's two more. And now I have a fairly tough choice with my last worker because I could uh, build... Uh, some more buildings, but I only have three wood. Like, I could build another uh, tent, for example, to have more shelter for my people, because I am drastically under in shelters right now, and they're going to get very sick. Or I could just gather more resources, like, down here while I'm fully heated, and just kind of uh, tough through it until next turn. Yeah, it is a tough one. I think for now I'm just going to get two more wood, and we'll see how much that uh, is terrible for me later. All right, so there you go. That was the action phase, the real meat of the game. The other phases you'll see are very quick. Let's go through them. All right, so first we have the Dusk phase. We're just going to draw and resolve a Dusk card. And I'm hoping it's that one we saw because we already know we can handle it. And it is indeed. Social dispute. Citizens' attitudes shape the future of our city. So hope is greater than discontent. I have three to two. So I can exhaust one of my hope tokens to gain a benefit based on what it is. So you'll see justice gives me minus two discontent. Care lets me cure three citizens. And motivation, the one I have, lets me add one temporary worker marker for next round. So that would give me an extra action. And yeah, I, mean, I don't want to get nothing for this, so let's go ahead and do that. And I'm actually not sure which of these tokens is supposed to be it, so let's just say it's that one, and that'll be my temporary worker. And then the cards will say at the bottom what to do with them. In this case, it says remove it from the game, shuffle the discard pile and a random new social dispute card into the dusk deck. And social disputes are basically the shuffling mechanic in here. So, you know, I might get my child card, for example, at some point. But for now, I've got another social dispute coming. So if care is greater than greed, I have one greed and zero care. Uh, but if greed is greater than care, turn all sickness tokens once. That is terrible. So I definitely want to uh, try to... Uh, get rid of that greed token, or maybe get lucky and get a care token, we'll see. So we shuffle that in, it might be the first card, it might be the third, who knows. 
All right, next we have the hunger phase. We're going to first reduce hunger using food. If we were hungry from a previous round, we're not. Then we resolve the hunger token. It has negative effects. I'll show you those in a second. Then we feed our citizens. So this is the hunger token. And basically when you're short food, it'll creep up. And then first you'll spend your food to reduce it. And then you suffer whatever effect is uh, in yellow in the current yellow kind of set off space. If you have hunger at all, you're always going to gain one discontent. But then uh, if you go further along, each of these skull icons means one of the uh, people being currently fed dies. So like this round, it would be children. And again, that's not the meeple. It's just down this track. Although if you go far enough, you will lose a meeple eventually. But I was good this round. I don't have hunger. So I do have to feed all eight children. So I just subtract down to one. But if I could not have fed them all, then hunger would have increased by the shortfall and set me up for some terribleness next round. All right, and finally, to end out a day, remember we skipped the first half though, so you'll see that in a second, is the night phase. All my citizens go back to my supply, and then I have to place as many citizens in heated shelters as I can, and everyone who's homeless increases their sickness track by one. And this is going to be terrible because I didn't get much built this turn. So remember, I've got five workers, three engineers, and two children. The two children can both safely stay at the child shelter, but the other eight people, I can only fit two of them in the tent. And I do have to check if it's heated. In this case, of course, everything on the board is heated, so it's not a problem. But like if I hadn't gotten yellow heated or hadn't gotten the inner circle, the uh, inner tile heated, then it would not work as a shelter. So basically out of eight people, I'm going to have to take uh, six sickness. I could divide it up between engineers and workers. I could take it all on one or not all, I guess, because there's too many of them. Now, engineers are the furthest back, so uh, it's going to be terrible regardless. Let's say we'll uh, leave four engineers out in the cold and two workers. Well, now engineers are more important. Let's do it like that. I don't know. All right, so that is one day. We're going into day two. So Dawn Phase says move the round marker and resolve events. And there are no events until round four, so we're good. Morning phase, draw and resolve a morning card. We just draw the top one. Relics of the past. One of our oldest citizens, or eldest, has passed away. After examining his goods, we have found a large collection of literature that he brought with him on the expedition. Our citizens are at odds over what should be done with it. Okay, so first option, keep the books as public property because their contents are a real treasure for the whole population of our city. His body will be burned in a public Thanksgiving ceremony. So I can only do this if I can exhaust one motivation or one justice. And sadly, because all of them are already exhausted, remember that's active, that's exhausted. I can't make that choice. If I had not exhausted my motivation from the Dusk card, I would have been able to. Oh my gosh, I would have lost an engineer, but I would not draw a body token. Okay, second option, use the books to fuel the generator. In these dire times, it's the only good use for them. So it's minus one discontent, so people will be uh, happier with me. But one engineer dies and I use the higher hope loss from the body token marker. So what that means is when you draw a corpse, you flip it over, except at the beginning of the game, and it will uh, tell you how much hope to lose. And usually use the higher number for adults and the lower number for children if they die for obvious reasons. But here uh, we would really mourn his loss. So I'd get minus one discontent. I get three coal, but I would also lose a lot of hope. And finally, that collection belongs to his family and his successor should inherit it. Uh, one engineer will die and you'll see these uh, special dusk cards. I would go from the special deck and add them to the pile. So something might happen from that. So the question is, do I want to lose some discontent, which I could get rid of that greed that's kind of hovering over me with that dusk card. But at the cost of losing more hope for this guy dying, yeah, I think I'm going to choose the uh, middle option, kind of be pragmatic with it. So this card itself is gone forever. That's the uh, red X there. I get rid of one discontent, so I could flip anger to inactive, but I'm going to uh, get rid of greed. I'm also getting three coal, so I am very good for heat for at least a little while. And I'm getting a new corpse from the bag, and uh, don't forget if the bag runs out, if I fill this thing, then I am done. And oof, I'm losing two hope tokens, minus two, uh, instead of one, which would have been normal for an adult. And here there's not much choice, so, oh my gosh, I am one away from instant loss if I lose another one. And since an engineer died, remember it's the uh, total number here, so it goes down to 11, so I've not lost a meeple for them yet. All right, next is the generator phase. First we're going to add sick based on the heat token, then do malfunction cubes. So I said this before, but I see where the furthest heat range token is, it's right here. And then every symbol to the left of it until I reach my heat token will activate. So here nothing activates because I heated us very well. But this will go back. I have to fire up the generator again. And because it was right here, I check and I'm adding two cubes to the malfunction bag. Now in the actual game, this will be like a little tower. You drop the cubes into uh, the generator and then they might pop out and show a malfunction. But here I'm going to add both of them to the bag. And then I'm going to roll 2d8. And if I had 10 or more cubes in the bag, I would use the higher number. Uh, since I only have uh, less than that, I use the lower one. And I got really lucky. I got a one. So I'm using the lower numbers. So one of them comes out here on the malfunction track. 
And if this ever fills up, remember the uh, first time my generator will break down and flip and just be worse. And the uh, second time it will explode and we lose. Next is the weather phase. I'm going to draw a weather card. I'm going to progress the tokens, collect food. And if I had scouts and expeditions, I would progress them, but I don't. And this part is always painful. So the thing at the top tells me how far the storm moves. When it reaches my current round, that's when the storm hits. Then it shows me how far I move the individual heating tokens. And finally, the uh, food numbers. I look at how many hunting lodges I have. I only have one, so I'm going to get two free food. The three at the bottom would be how far uh, expeditions progress, but we don't have any. So storms coming closer. Both of these advance a single space, so it'll be tougher to heat ourselves. And there's uh, not any new icons yet, but I do have to kind of go further. But on the positive side, I have two food towards the 11 I need to feed our engineers fully. Finally, we're finishing out everything we haven't seen yet, the preparation phase. We're going to resolve our six citizen tokens. So you'll see right now all my tokens are on the syringe side. And you'll see there are icons at the top of the sickness tokens, or sort of the track they're on. And this will tell me what I do. So uh, when I have a syringe token, if the token is in those four spaces, one through four, then it advances one towards getting worse. Of course, if I had had somebody still on the zero spot, they wouldn't do anything. Nobody would be sick there. But here you'll see it has a little uh, flip or rotation icon and also that. So it will advance one, but then I will flip it. Now, when you flip from syringe to skull, as I'm doing now, nothing further happens. But when you flip from skull to syringe, you have to kill a worker like you saw before. You bring one of your people down. It might eventually make you lose one of your meeples. And you have to draw a corpse and suffer hope loss, which would make me lose the game at this point. Lots of nasty stuff. But that's it. You've seen every phase of the game, except basically for uh, expeditions. So let's just go ahead and do another action phase. So first things first, I do want to heat at least the minimum, which is going to be three coal again, leaving me with two. And that'll start this up for one, two, three, which means the outer B tiles will not be heated, but everything in the first two tiles will be heated as well as red and orange buildings. And you'll see I will not suffer any negative effects with my heat level currently. Uh, going one more would not help me anymore, except if I need to do a B tile, like really exterior action. And let's just do some basic things I know I'm gonna do. I'll go ahead and put my temporary worker at the uh, hunter's hut to get five food. And that is not enough yet. I'll need to build another hunter's hut and also hunt there if I want to fully feed people. I'll go to my gathering post and gather again. I mean, I could put down a B tile first and have a chance of getting more stuff. Uh, that might be worth doing, although it's cold. Yeah, you know what? Let's try it. So I'll go ahead and shovel some snow to get a B tile. I'll put it up here. And oh God, it's just a steam core. That is not what I wanted. I guess I should look into upgrading some stuff. Don't forget that makes my workers even sicker. What was I thinking when oh, this should be on the skull side? All right, well, now I'll gather here getting two wood, a coal, and that steam core. This is good. I've got uh, six wood now. Good. We need to build some more hunting places. We need to uh, get some more shelter. Lots of stuff to do. So on that note, let's go ahead and build some stuff. I don't need to get the beacon for expeditions yet. I definitely want a hunter's hut. That'll cost me one. I think a medic post is going to be pretty important. That'll cost me another one. Then I could get a workshop to get uh, technologies and use my steam cores to upgrade buildings. But I think more housing. And the thing is, tents get worse once the storm hit. They're basically unusable at that point. So I think I'll spend three wood and build a bunkhouse. So that's uh, five of my six. Uh, get over here. And let's see, where can we fit these? I think I can take away that one wood. Uh, it's not that big of a loss to get rid of it. So let's put the, uh, the hunter's post there, I guess. Again, I lose the wood because I'm covering up the uh, building space. I have where else to build? I could get rid of another wood, but man, that seems like a painful thing to do. I can go here, but then I'll have no way to get those trees unless I upgrade a lumber place. But I guess I have other trees, so sure. Let's put the uh, medical tent there. And I actually feel better about coal than wood right now, so let's put my bunkhouse here and get rid of those two coal. All right, I've got five workers left. Definitely going to send one to my new hunter's hut to get more food. That's getting me to 13, so good, but how am I ever gonna get to that one? I will send an engineer to the medic post, and this either lets me decrease sickness by three or flip somebody by letting them rest in a bed. And uh, neither of these is quite right. I can't get workers down below where they need to not die next turn. So even though it's just uh, putting a band-aid on the wound, I think I'm just gonna flip them and then they'll move forward and become a uh, skull again anyway, yuck. All right, three guys left. I guess I could pass another law. I think crowded quarters might be the way to go because I'm really worried about sickness. You see it uh, increases my anger. What that symbol at the top means, now I do have to draw a discontent, but then if I have uh, one anger that is exhausted, I have to flip it to active. But it would let me put one additional citizen meeple in each of my shelters. And you know, I might be wrong, but I think child shelter counts as a shelter and it says citizen meeples, so I think I can put an adult in the child shelter. So that would put me to three, if I'm understanding that right, three, 
four, a seven with the bunkhouse I built. Does that mean I only have one person out of shelter? So yeah, let's do it. And this is Mike from the future checking in. I did check with the designer and you cannot put an adult in the children's house. So I'll be cheating on that for the entire rest of the playthrough. All right, so engineers are uh, decreeing that we're all sleeping in beds with each other and nobody's happy. I put the crowded quarters into law. I draw discontent and it's apathy. So luckily not an anger, so I don't have to flip anything. And then like before, I'm getting rid of shelter heaters and I'm randomly shuffling one of these into the current dusk deck and getting rid of the other one. And hey, now we can fit all the potential laws in one board. We can only pass four laws per game, by the way. So if I pass two more, then the other ones will not be available. All right, and yikes, I got uh, two guys left. I think we're gonna have one of them get some more of this coal because I want to build in that spot. I'll have that be the regular worker. And then what do I want to do with the engineer? He could take away the uh, malfunction from the generator. And that would take me up to five cues, but I only have one. What a waste. Oh, I guess I could get uh, these resources. See, we only have one wood, so let's go ahead and get uh, two more wood from right here. Oh, you're on your head, buddy. There you go. All right, now time for the terrible. Let's do our dusk phase. Oh no, this is because I'm crowding everybody. Bad sanitary conditions. The crowded quarters have terrible sanitary conditions. Put this card on your crowded quarters law. This round, night phase, you cannot put additional citizen pawns in any shelter. At the night phase, place this card on dusk discard pile. Okay, so this one could keep on coming back and it's just going to basically take away <laughs> the exact thing I put it into law for. Awesome. But nothing else negative happens. So we go into hunger. Uh, we don't have any hunger to deal with. So we're just losing 11 for engineers going back down to two. And now the night phase, all my citizens are gonna return and I only have four spots for my eight adults. Oh, Lord help me. And here's the thing, if I, well, I guess the engineers, I, mean, I can't just have all the workers go because uh, then I'll actually not have one of my meeples. They'll just be sick for the round. So I guess one, two, three, four, and just have everybody suffering and be about to die. Oh, this is terrible. But we're into day three, the dawn is moving. Our morning card is people from our convoy. One of our people come to you and said that a group of refugees with his family hasn't arrived yet. He is worried about them and asks you to send an expedition to look for them. Prove your intent by sending expedition else people might get angry. Add number seven, DO7 to the dust deck. And then this is discarded. So like I said, we have this big deck of special cards. And we know from the flavor text there that they want us to send out an expedition, which don't forget we need to do or get ready to do by round four anyway. So that's probably worth doing, but I just shuffled that in. All right, generator. No one gets sick, thank God, because we're uh, next to the icons. And we're adding two cubes to the bag again. And taking the lower number. Ah, so all three. So all three are coming out. We're almost halfway to malfunction. So we'll definitely have to do that generator action soon-ish. And now our fun, fun weather phase. Oh, the storm doesn't advance at all, but all the tokens advance. Heating is going to be tougher. And, oh, cool. We're getting three food per hut. So we're going to get six free food. Nice. So now even uh, starting the uh, thing for one coal is barely going to be worth it. But we are up to eight food on our long trek to try to feed our workers. I guess the best we'll get to is 18 with two actions and uh, this will be fun. And speaking of fun, it's time to resolve our sickness tokens. Our kids just get a little bit sick, but these guys are coming over and they are about to have a death next round. And I'm in a deadly, deadly spot here because uh, if I lose anybody, I'm going to lose some hope and that'll be it. Oh, this might be the final day, you see. All right, so I'm certainly going to start by doing both of the worker huts or hunter's hut. That'll get us 10 food. So we are close-ish to feeding people. Oh, wait, before I do that, I better fire my generator. They'll get sick. But to do just the central actions, I need two. I need four. And that'll advance a uh, track on my sickness. Ah. Do I have five coal? I guess I do. But I think I can maybe make do with three. Well, no, a lot of my actions are here. I need to do at least four. Uh, let's go with four and suffer a little bit of sickness later. All right, so that'll make me fine for all the uh, middle and inner tier buildings. I'll send this worker here, get oh, just a wood and a coal now. It's not much of anything. But I do have four wood. I know I need another medical post. But I'd also love to build that uh, beacon. Maybe start doing an expedition in case that card comes up. Although look at my hope problem with death. And look, I can pass this public house law, one of the uh, uh, optional ones that came in. That would give me a hope right when I built it. And then it would let me immediately build the public house for one wood, which would uh, let me gain another hope each turn. God, I think I might need that. All right, so let's go ahead and do it. Oh, I forgot to say the bad sanitary conditions are in the discard pile now. So they won't come up again until it's shuffled with the social dispute coming out. So with public house, I'm certainly going to gain a token. There's a care one, okay. And I do get a random dusk card shuffled in just to the deck and I'll check for the discard pile in. And that was not part of a pair, so I don't get rid of anything else. And I will spend one wood to build it. And it's an orange, so it can uh, chill over here, kind of further out. 
And let's send a worker there now to get some uh, hope right now. We got a justice one, so we got one of each, although none of them are active. Finally, I do think I want to build more buildings, so I'll uh, spend, I guess, all three of my wood. I can get a medical post. Uh, yeah, and then we'll let me heal people some. <sighs> this is not great. Yeah, let's do medical post. Maybe a sawmill? Oh, no, I already built buildings in all the trees, darn it. Uh, let's do a medical post, another hunter's hut, and something. <laughs> another medical post. So I can use... Well, no, I'm not going to be able to use all my engineers next turn. I'll have to fix the generator. I guess a workshop, since I would one day like to uh, use that. So the workshop is hot. It's red. I can put it all the way down here. No worries. The hunter's hut, I guess I'll ditch that coal. And the medical post I'll put up here on this opened up spot. My last two engineers will both go to medic posts. And let's see. I mean, I can't just keep on flipping them. If I go one, two, three, four, five, six... Well, let's do it with the engineers. One, two, three, four, five, six. I can get into like a nice safe area. Oh, actually, yeah, I guess that's where I need to be. Well, no, I can put this right here and push this one back because that should uh, keep me from losing a meeple even though I'm still gonna have a death. And then hopefully I can just push him really far back and not worry about the skulls too much. Now let's see what fun dusk card I have in store. Tight skirts and loose morals. <laughs> Come on, why do I keep on getting things right after I pass a law? We turn a blind eye to indecent behavior or not. If the public house isn't built yet, minus two hope and reshuffle this card back to the dusk deck. No, it's built. Uh, discard one hope token, even an active one, to discard one discontent a token, even an active one, or add one discontent to add one hope. Ooh. I don't think I can afford to discard one because of the deaths that are probably coming. But I will add one. Okay, it's another anger. To add a hope. And let's flip over care, because that often kind of ties with healing people. All right, and then that is uh, gone forever. So, okay, I guess that wasn't too bad. All right, now hunger. Who boy, I am 25, 18. I am seven short. So my food goes down to zero and my hunger goes up to seven. But the good thing is it's kind of offset by a turn. So if I can get a bunch of food like past the children who are being fed again next day, then I'll be able to bring the hunger down and not actually lose anybody. So it has to kind of stay there into the next turn to have the negatives happen. Okay, and the night phase. Again, I'm not 100% sure if I can put an adult in the child shelter, but I'm going to say that I can put one in there. So I only have to have one person get sick. Oh, crud. Oh, no. All right, I guess I am going to lose a worker. I don't want to have both of them die. And hey, I survived in round four. Oh, I didn't build a beacon. Darn it. So that means I look at are we alone? That's what the uh, token is there for. And it says we have failed. Plus one apathy. So remember, that means I'm going to draw a discontent. And then if I have an apathy anywhere, I'm going to flip one. And then I'll get place uh, scenario card five on the event display. So I got two apathies. Doesn't really matter. Don't forget, if I get two more discontent, I lose. So here's the card I'm gaining, suspicious. People are suspicious about our plans. They can't understand why we didn't send an expedition to find people from our convoy yet. At the beginning of every morning phase, if you still don't have a beacon built in the city, plus one discontent. Uh, if you do have a beacon built, turn scenario card two and discard this one. Okay, so I kind of have a one turn <laughs> grace period here if I can build a beacon this turn, although that seems unlikely. And now I move the scenario token to round 10. That's the next time something will happen. Morning card. Automaton request. Our citizens are overwhelmed by the amount of work and demand that we build automatons to lessen the heavy burden put on them. No problem. If you already have automatons, you're good. We need to transfer our workforce. Promise to build an automaton. Can we add a card to the dust deck? Place this card in event display with one unbuilt automaton on it. When you build a new automaton, take it from here instead. Okay, so there we go. Or we won't build such inhuman machines. This insane idea won't become the backbone of the new world. Dismantle all automatons. That won't hurt us. Gain three wood for each... Oh, for each automaton dismantled. Never mind. Um, I don't think I have time. So I'm going to go ahead and say no and get card 41 in the deck. Our generator phase, we'd have to advance one type of person. And literally everything is terrible. Okay, well, workers, you're going to be bad anyway. This goes back, but we uh, gain three tokens in there. And they'll probably all come out, but let's see. So we're very close to the generator breaking down and becoming harder to light for the rest of the game. Now the weather. Still no storm, but everything advances one, and we're only getting two food per, so that'll be a six with my new one. But yeah, my coal costs, oh my gosh. All right, there we go. Uh, six food, which is already almost enough to deal with the hunger. I just need to get some more. And now the painful part, we have to resolve our six citizens. So engineers and children will just advance one because it's the one they're on, not the one they move to. But workers, I'm going to have one of the meeples sick. I'm going to kill one and they're advancing one. So they go down to 24. I get a new corpse to hang out with. And it's minus one. So I'll lose, uh, I don't know, I guess the justice. And this guy's sick this turn, so I can't use him. All right, let's get to our action. So I have uh, six food. So I need uh, eight plus seven is 15 to kind of take care of everything. 
So I guess two of my three hunters huts I should activate. Oh, again, I need to heat up. So let's see, I need to at least get the center tile, which would be, oh my God, three coal. Do I even have it? <laughs> no, I don't. So we need to have somebody get some coal and get sick. I guess they can go all the way down here since it won't matter anyway. Well, let's send a worker. Oh, Lord help us. Okay, then I'll fire it for three. So currently that means the inner tiles are good and red buildings, but not orange buildings yet. And then my food will be up to 16, so safe. I'm gonna send an engineer to the generator to remove five cubes. There we go, safe again. I definitely gotta do at least one medical tent. So let's get children back, let's get engineer back and start working back our workers. Gosh, can I afford to do another healing? Uh, I could use the workshop to upgrade something. Oh, wait a second, the medic posts are in the outer circle and they're yellow, so I would take a sickness just to heal sickness. Oh man, okay. <laughs> so then engineers are back up anyway. Okay, fine, we'll do it again. This is a losing strategy. So we're gaining one engineer, but then we can go one, two, three, I guess. And I've got one worker left? Oh my gosh. Uh, I'm gonna build the beacon? <laughs> I don't know, man. All right, here we go, I'm building the beacon. And it's a double spot. Where do I even put it? Well, it is a, an automatic thing, so it's white. All it means is that I have to put it over two spots, but I can immediately get two expeditions. So I'm gonna shuffle all the A expeditions. And they both come down here and basically I can put a uh, free worker on them and he'll advance every turn with the weather phase. And then when I get here, I can get free resources and or like uh, continue on and get to a B card and maybe a C card and have cool stuff happen. But for now, we're done. All right, dusk phase, give me something good. Okay, have we found them? Oh man, if you have a citizen meeple on an expedition, go to one, otherwise go to two. I didn't get one there yet. He is talking to the people. This man is calling our decision soulless and this makes unrest between our people. Plus one anger. Oh gosh. I think I might die here. So, oh, actually, every time I uh, grab one, I can flip one instead. So I can flip the anger, but the next two I uh, gain can just be flipping. Okay, but at least that card is gone forever. Okay, hunger, we're actually okay. So first we're gonna lose all seven of our hunger, and then we're gonna lose another uh, eight food to feed our children. So that is 15 total, we have one left. And finally, night phase, again, with my interpretation, we just have one person getting sicker, which is, is all terrible. This is all the worst. Oh, I guess children aren't a skull yet, so there we go. Made it to day five, yay! And maybe our last morning card? Prostitution. Some citizens sell their bodies for additional food rations and other goods. Turn a blind eye. I'll make a public campaign about morality that will stop this harmful practice. Exhaust one hope. Or select one street to become the red light district. At least it'll happen when and where we allow it. Uh... I'm gonna turn a blind eye <laughs> and just hope I never draw it because I'm sure it's bad. So card 47. I have a lot of fun things in this dust den now. All right, generator. Um, I am uh, taking one more syringe. Guess on the children. And then I only get two cubes added to the bag. Let's just see if they both go in. Nope, only one of them. So our generator is actually looking pretty good. Weather, let's see if the storm finally advances. Just one, and then just the two higher ones advance, and we get six food again. Oh, you know what? I realized I've been doing it wrong, did I? Yeah, I was like multiplying it by that two number, so I think one round I probably got too much food. All right, so Storm is very close. Uh, I think unless I get another zero, it'll definitely hit me next round if I'm even still alive. So food, I'm basically good. I can spend fewer actions on it next turn. All right, now sickness happens again. So workers is flipping advance, children flipping advance, and engineers advance. We didn't actually lose anybody, that's cool. Oh man, I have only one coal. And I need at least three to get anywhere like useful except activating red buildings. Uh, I guess I gotta go here. So let's send a worker, I guess. I'll get two coal and then spend all three of it to heat us, but I am looking terrible after that. Workers get sicker. My heat is moderate. Just gonna do one feeding or hunter's hut. So that's up to 12. And I have no wood, basically no prospects for wood. I gotta dig some more, I guess. So let's send a worker to do it. We'll try to heal them later. And let's get uh, two A's around here, I guess. Or actually, let's do them right here. All right, wood and trees. So it would be really good to build uh, one of those like little gathering things for wood somewhere around here. See, I think even though it's cold, this is the worst. I'm gonna go ahead and uh, get two wood from here and make my workers even more dead. I want a sawmill and I want a charcoal kiln and both cost two wood, lovely. Uh, let's build the sawmill. Oh, I can't build where that guy went. Ah. All right, we'll do it later. Let's. Get a charcoal, oh wait, if I build a charcoal kiln, I don't have enough wood to actually fire it. Yeah, I do not know. Okay, I'm just gonna build uh, the charcoal kiln, I guess, right here. Oh, you know what, I can uh, dismantle some buildings for one wood each. All right, let's see, I'm not gonna pass any more laws. <laughs> I think it's terrible, I don't think I can ever build that building back. In fact, I think it's not allowed to dismantle your starting buildings. 
So let's just... Oh, I can't dismantle that one either then. Well, how many hunter's huts do I really need? Okay, I'll dismantle one of them for a wood. And that leaves me with a wood now to use my charcoal kiln. Although that'll make my engineer cold. I've got four coal now. And let's, I guess, burn three of it. And now my medical beds are safe. I can put uh, a guy on each of them. Oh, oops, I forgot. The suspicious card was gone. I was supposed to see what the other card was because I built a beacon. Finding Winter Home. Beacon's lights have guided refugees scattered across the frozen wasteland to our settlements. The news they brought is sad and alarming. They say no other beacons were lit. We must check what has happened at Winter Home, the closest settlement that was still occupied. Okay, so I place X500 on the exploration display. I must finish this expedition by the end of the game or I lose. Okay, then I immediately choose. Let the refugees into our city. Plus one hope. Add six workers, two engineers, and three children to your population. Oh my gosh. Or send them to look for another place to live. Crud, this would have changed everything. Okay, well. So I get this extra special expedition I have to complete at some point. I would have gained a hope. And I would have gained six workers. That brings me to 30. That gives me another meeple. Two engineers, no difference there. And three children, another child. Now let's just add them in now. And I don't think it would have changed anything else because I haven't gotten to like the feeding and all that stuff yet. So let's go ahead and with my worker, uh, gather two wood here. Oh, and I never resolved my uh, six healing. Oh my gosh. Everyone is dying. One, two, three, four, five, six. Ugh. All right, my dust card. Inhuman machines. You have promised we will never go that far. Oh, so if I had built an automaton and had been a hypocrite, I guess bad things would have happened. Okay, so I got a two. People started to believe in their own strength. Soulless machines could never achieve what we have. That's a plus one motivation. Awesome. And uh, this goes away. All right, so I get to draw one and then flip a motivation to active. Nice. Although I'm still very close to dying. Okay, hunger. Oh, I'm now uh, one out of range of the engineers. So the hunger will increase one, but that's not too bad. And now I gained a worker and a child. The children are fine because I can fit a bunch in the child shelter, but now I'm two people over. So what the hey, they're already terrible. Let's make the workers even sicker. All right, and somehow we made it to day six. You'll get to see a storm. Well, maybe you will. Let's see if we die. Orphans. Some of the children are orphans and they're left uncared for. We should set up a place where these poor things will be cared for. Okay, one, our society can provide care for our weakest. Acts of mercy can break the ice of even the coldest heart. Only if you have a child's shelter, we do. I can exhaust one hope for minus two discontent. Heck yes. So let's exhaust my motivation and let's get rid of these inactive ones for now. Our generator, we suffer no ill effects because we heated up so much, but we are putting five tokens in the bag. And there was one left already, but we're not up to the 10 where we have to use the higher value. So two, so that puts us halfway to a malfunction and uh, the bag has four and probably gonna have a storm. Wow, no, that is shocking. All of these go up one and we've got another one that would flip a uh, sickness token and kill people. And we're gaining uh, five food. Wait, did I get rid of one of my food huts? Indeed I did, so four food. So certainly not very close to our uh, 30 workers over there. Now we resolve sickness, our children engineers are okay, but workers, they advance, they flip once killing somebody, and uh, one of them is gonna be sick. So we're back down to 29, so we'll have a sick worker and one less meeple anyway. So there we go, a smaller workforce. And our fourth corpse, minus one hope. Um, let's get rid of one of these two unactivated motivations. But hey, we are still alive. This is the longest I've lived, so that's an accomplishment. All right, so we currently only have one coal. So let's send a dying worker to the charcoal kiln to get us more. That will make them even sicker. But we have five coal now. That would get us one, two, three, four, five. I mean, that's the orange buildings, and yeah, I guess it's the best we can do. And I guess I should hunt twice. So that gets us to 14. I think we, ah, I don't know. <laughs> I guess I'll, uh, I mean, I'll put engineers on the medical beds, although it's going to hurt them uh, medically. I'll get one. Oh, so first the engineers go up to you from those actions. So one, two, three, four, five, six. Oh, I should probably repair the generator for five. So that's clear now. And I have one guy left. Oh, Lord, help me. You know what? Let's send him on a darn expedition. Um, <laughs> let's do the one we need to do before we win. Ha ha ha. As it will win. <laughs> And dusk phase? Oh, the inevitable. Each gravely ill citizen dies. And then one citizen gets sick for each body token you have. Yeah, both engineers and children are gravely ill, so I'm gonna lose one of each. I think this is probably the end. First corpse will be the adult, losing one. Second corpse will be the child, losing two more, that's three. Oh, I'm barely alive, so one, two, three, wow. And then I have six corpses, so six people get sick, which is, just 
Great. One, two, three, four, five, six. I don't know. Now, hunger. This should be fun. I'm down by uh, 14. Oh, actually, wait. I'm down by 15 because first I would have uh, gotten rid of the one I already had. But nothing bad happens from it yet. Now, let's see. Night phase. I'm down uh, just one meeple again. So this one needs to get sick. I don't know. Children. Great. All right. And I can tell you for free, this will be the final day. But at least I want to show you the storm, even if I die from the effects. So landslide. With a loud blast, a part of the rocky wall has fallen into our pit. Minus one hope. <laughs> all right, well, that's it. <laughs> I'm already dead. Uh, they've lost all hope in surviving. But to show you what would have happened with the storm, this would have uh, ticked up one. Let's see, can I rotate it? There we go. So that it would cost two to start up the generator each round. And additionally, all of my tents, which I only had one of, would flip to their iced outside. And that means they cannot be used anymore. And any other tents I built would not be usable. And there is a law that would have let me heat my uh, places to avoid that, but I got rid of it when I crowded everybody together. And then finally, the storm goes to the 12th spot, but now it's a larger storm, which will hurt us even more and make even the uh, bunkhouses I've built be useless. But we didn't survive. But hey, we made it to day seven. That is uh, halfway through. Uh, I'm so much better than I've done before. And in retrospect, I think I should have gotten a charcoal kiln and some tree cutting capabilities while things were nicer to get more consistent uh, resource generation without as much danger and with more heat from the buildings. But you live and you learn. So that was Frostpunk, one I'm really excited about. If you want to see my review of the game so far, click the link that just popped up. Good gaming, everyone, and I'll see you at the next stop.